let's talk about how we're going to be presenting the data. And so what I mean here is, let's say, for example, you've already scanned, you got your data. How is it going to be presented to you in the viewport? So it's just sitting there and, and what kinds of things uh, can you see? Well, the first thing is with 3D data, you often have the option to change what you're seeing. So uh, typically we want to see the uh, RGB data or the color data, which is great, but sometimes not. Sometimes it's more important to see, for example, the intensity data, or you can do things like height ramps to see, you know, you'll color something red that's really high and something blue that's really low. And that can be helpful as well. So understanding the way that you are going to present this is going to be helpful. Also the density of scan data. So some uh, software programs will not load up all the data at once okay so what they do is they might filter out or when you're moving it may what's called decimate or, or do something where it reduces the number of points just to help increase performance so have a look at that in your software package depending on what it is that you're using um, because it can be helpful there's also some things uh, on gap filling, for example. So in Ferrocene, there's an option to do gap filling. So if you don't have a really great density, or for example, you've subsampled the point cloud, so you've reduced the total number of points, you can uh, do something where, for example, it'll take a point and another point and then try to fill the gap in between. Uh, and that's, that can be kind of helpful. You can also adjust point size. Point size is very, very common in a lot of software packages. And, uh, you know, it'll help to look, uh, make the point cloud or make the data look uh, a little bit more dense. Now there's other effects too. For example, there's a type of x-ray view or sometimes there's like false lighting and things like that that you can put on. So have a look at those too. Sometimes they may or may not be helpful. But one of uh, the big ones for sure is going to be your background color. And sometimes people just don't think about it or they just use, um, you know, whatever is there uh, or they'll stick like an image in the background that it's got some, I don't know, sky or, or uh, some kind of an outdoor scene or whatever, which may or may not help you. And it really depends on what it is that you are capturing and what it is you want to present. So let's say, for example, you have an outdoor scene. You may want to have a cloud or a blue sky or something like that. And then as you fly around it, you kind of see that. So some software packages will give you that particular option. But in other cases, you may want to remove that completely. You may want people to focus just on the model or the point cloud data. And in that case, you want something that isn't as distracting. Okay, so you may you may not want to place a gradient. Uh, you may want to not want to have like weird colors. Uh, black is a really good color to start with. And the reason is laser scanners in particular don't scan dark, dark, dark black surfaces very well. So the chances of you having a lot of black points is usually pretty low. So often when you have a black background and your point cloud in front of that, that's usually pretty good. Now, in the case of a photogrammetry model that captures colors maybe a lot better, you may want to change that. So you may want to have a white background or a gray background. So just keep that in mind uh, whenever you're going to be presenting these things. Another one that is very common in a lot of different software has to do with orthographic versus perspective. Oh, there is one more thing actually, and that has to do with the field of view. So I'm actually going to be showing these two things, the orthographic versus perspective, and then the effect of field of view. So right now I'm in perspective view. So if you look at this, you'll see that um, the top here is a little bit bigger than the bottom, okay? Or the parts that are farther away are a little bit smaller than the parts that are in front of us. And so these perspective lines sort of become smaller as you go far away. So these are like vanishing lines and that sort of thing. So this is the way people see. And so it's a very natural way to present the model or whatever it is that you're doing. Now, there is a way to change that. And um, one is through the field of view. But before I do that, I'm just going to use the default setting here. So there's orthographic and perspective. Okay, now there's two types of perspective, but they're kind of the same, but I'm going to choose orthographic now. Okay, so we're just on object centered perspective. If I go to orthographic, you'll see that this cube starts to look a little funny. And the reason is an orthographic projection gives you all the sides sort of in an equal dimension. And so it looks a little strange when you're looking at it. It's not very clear to the eye what is going on here. Now, orthographic projections are used in, for example, engineering or sometimes in engineering drawings. So they can be useful, but they're not that useful for presenting an animation. If you really want to impress people, usually this is not the way to go. So make sure that you're an object-centered perspective, and that's what I've got here.
Now, there is a way to sort of go between, for example, a very, very high perspective, wide field of view to something which is more orthographic. And you have to be careful of that. And there are ways or advantages and disadvantages. So for example, if I go to the camera settings here, uh, if you look down in this area right now, I'm at about 50 degrees. Okay, so this is kind of a normal uh, field of view. But if I change this to something that's really wide, so let's say I go to something like 180 degrees, and I'm just going to click OK. Or actually that's even too much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that back down to about 120 okay so we're actually inside the box now so I need to get back and zoom out on this there we go so you'll see what the problem is here this looks highly highly distorted so this is 120 degrees it's very very wide it doesn't look that great so as I rotate this around it just kind of looks weird to the eye it's too stretched right the perspective is is just too much here so you need to keep this in mind and I have seen videos where people do this before and it just doesn't look all that appealing. Now there is a case where you may want a wider field of view and that is when you're inside of a small space. So if you have a photogrammetry model that's inside of a small room or, or a laser scanner or point cloud and you're in a small room, you may want to see more. So if you have 50 degrees, you may not see as much of the point cloud as you want. And as you try to back the camera out to see more, you end up just breaking through or passing through another wall. So in order to be inside of a room and still capture or have a wide field of view, you need to change the uh, setting that's over here. So this is the, uh, the 120, you know, you move it up, you can be 90, 100, you can test it out and see what works for you. I'm going to go back to 50 because uh, we're just dealing with this particular model here and in cloud compare, but these things are important. So orthographic versus perspective, and then of course the field of view, having a wide or a more normal or even shallow uh, field of view is super helpful.